You know, the world has changed tremendously. You know, 2020 has been a time where we're seeing everybody work from home. We're seeing children and kids do school online. You can't really go outside anymore. Everybody's just kind of stuck inside. And the one common thing that I normally hear, you know, if you, if you live in a household with like kids or if you have a significant other, girlfriend, husband, what have you, you know, I can't get on my Netflix. My Fortnite won't play. I can't do this. I can't do that. A lot of times in what I'm kind of seeing that's being more and more consistent around different households is their Wi-Fi sucks. You know, not necessarily everybody has really bad internet. You know, I think nationally our internet is probably one of the worst among, you know, just anybody else who has internet like uh, overseas and whatnot. The fastest speeds you can really get here consumer-wise is a gigabit up and down. You know, I'm one of the lucky ones that has Google Fiber. The reason why I'm moving into this apartment complex to actually have it. So I am cool with that. The internet speeds, it's not the problem. What a lot of people are having is Wi-Fi coverage where either they take their laptop, you know, and everybody's working from home now, so it's a lot more common to be able to take your laptop around while you say you're doing the dishes or saying you like just chilling on the couch and watching some TV and doing some emails or something. So depending on where you actually have your Wi-Fi router, a lot of you guys, you know, not pointing anybody out, but for the less tech savvy person, a lot of people were probably mostly just using the standard Wi-Fi router that you got for the cable company, in which that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But depending on where they put it, you know, where my Google Fiber is, my Google Fiber is right here next to my TV. My, I don't live in a huge apartment, so luckily I don't really need anything really super powerful, or super strong. Yet I did purchase a really high quality Wi-Fi router. Uh, check out the other video that I put on for my Google Fiber video about, you know, I got, I purchased a really good Wi-Fi router, so it really helped out with everything in my apartment. If you live in a house per se, your needs might be a little bit different you might require more access points to be centered around the house in order to increase your coverage so you don't get drop speeds and you don't lose Netflix connection, you don't have the continuum buffering and everything like that. The term mesh, you're gonna to start to hear a lot more and more. And there's already mesh Wi-Fi access points already out in the market. You'll see ones by your Google, Google Wi-Fi. There's ones by Orbi, some by Netgear, even Nighthawk, I believe has their own set of mesh Wi-Fi routers. So what we're gonna do today actually is I purchased this off of Monoprice. The, the thing about your mesh routers is they're pretty pricey. You can expect to pay normally north of around $300 for a good set. In order to utilize the speeds that you're actually getting, you're gonna have to spend a little bit of money in order to get a real quality Wi-Fi experience. So you can have your continuous speeds that you're using for it. Because otherwise, if you're using, like, you know, I have gigabit up and down, but there's no Wi-Fi or mesh router or any type of, like, wireless access point that can actually support gigabit up, gigabit down. I already knew this. A lot of my stuff is mostly hardwired anyways. So I am not a good use case for this. But for anybody who actually has a home and you have a problem connecting to Wi-Fi constantly, you get constant slowdowns. And you're especially going to notice it too with kids going back to school and everybody working from home. The idea behind a mesh system is you have these three little nodes. One of them will plug in behind your actual router via a Cat5 connection here. And the idea is to then take these other two nodes and put them around your house. You want to essentially make a triangle type, type of solution. So what they do is they work off each other. This is what is considered a gateway and these two are considered repeaters. They're actually not physically plugged into your network. Instead what they do, they wirelessly send transmit data across each other to form this mesh. So anytime that I walk around with my laptop, depending on where I am, I'm always going to be constantly connected to the network where versus a standard type of Wi-Fi scenario where you have a uh, your basically everything is gateways where you have things plugged in to cat five cables all across and different points of your home trying to increase your Wi-Fi coverage. That's not considered a mesh. You are getting a good coverage of Wi-Fi. The problem was that though, because they're not a mesh is you have to really, really, really fine tune your wireless access points in order for your device to then jump between access points. 
The biggest problem everybody makes with Wi-Fi is it's not the Wi-Fi access points that's telling the device to go to the other device or go to the other access point. It's actually the device. The device itself looks for whatever the strongest signal is and it will only drop that signal and connect to a new access point when that is no longer in range. So the whole concept of mesh is to make that completely easy. And model price sells a really good, almost as good as a like Google Wi-Fi mesh router. You can get it on sale for about $129.99. So setup is a cinch. Essentially, again, all you really need, see so that's my router here, say hi to Iron Man. Simply plug it in to an outlet and then have that connected to the back of the model price wireless access point and they just need a cat5 cable a cat5 cable that uh, has an empty port on your router that you have plug it in to the back of the internet port device right the back right in the back there which says internet and then you'll let it connect and do its thing as right now, by the, indicated by the flashing lights, it was trying to get an IP address. Now that's a solid light. It now has an IP address. Now we can continue to go set this up on the computer. We got the device plugged in. It has an IP address. Now that we have that all set up, all we have to do now is configure the software side. So all you have to really do is connect to it. Uh, when you have it plugged in and it picks an IP address, you're going to have a, a Wi-Fi that's called my something. Actually, I should just look at my computer. It says on my computer. Duh. It is called Mesh Go. Very original name. <laughs> so you connect to a, uh, you have some type of device. You can use an iPad if you want to, I guess. You could even, uh, I'm using my computer because it's this easy. You connect to that SSID Wi-Fi, and then you just simply go to the IP address that it tells you within the manual. Uh, 192.168.10.1. And that'll get you into the system configuration. We'll show you right here exactly how it is. So as you can see, my, my regular Windows desktop that I have. So I'm going to go down here. I happen to have another Wi-Fi card set up as well as an Ethernet color, as well as an Ethernet card on my desktop. So I'm going to go look for the Mesh Go. It is an open network. It is not uh, password protected or anything like that because this is the initial setup process that you're going to do. So we're going to connect to that. And once we connect to that, we're just going to open up a web browser and we're going to browse to that IP address that I mentioned earlier. So we're connected now. We're going to open up good old Google Chrome and we're going to go to 192.168.10.1 and we get into here. Now, uh, I didn't actually read uh, what the mesh was, but I'm assuming that's admin. Hey, all right. So, uh, Definitely want to give it a new Wi-Fi password, um, whatnot. Uh, hang on, this is looking kind of weird. Uh, you want to give it a new administrator password in order for, you know, somebody happen to get onto your network and anything. If they know the IP address of what it is, they can get in and change different things. So make sure you change it to something that people can't easily guess. And now to take you to the next screen, this is where you actually set up what you want your Wi-Fi name to be. So you want to set up to DHCP, so I mean the device you can connect to automatically gains an IP address and you can search the internet. You can change it to static IP if you want to, if you're a little more tech savvy and don't want any device on your network to automatically get an IP address, where you have to actually physically assign an IP address to that device in order to get outbound to the internet. It's a lot more work. It's more secure, yes, but um, for everybody, mostly just going to keep it the same, keep it the DHCP. You can change the SSID. This is my Wi-Fi WPA2. I always recommend that. Uh, you can actually use WPA2-PSK. Uh, that gives you a little bit more security. WPA and WPA2 will help if you have any older devices connected to your network, much older like Wi-Fi uh, devices like old laptops or like you know, the original iPad and that something that can connect to uh, a 2.4 and a 5 gigahertz connection. So your old legacy devices will actually um, WPA2 WPA and WPA2 will help with that. 
And that's essentially all the setup that you do. With the other devices that you have now, all you really need to do is find a pretty good placement for those wireless access points to be able that's like not too far. You don't want to put it in a room that's like like three different separate walls behind it. You know, if you can't put it outside in your garage, you have to at least keep it within, I say, 100 to 150 feet within each other. And even then, depending on like the construction of your house and like what walls and like how many different barriers it goes through can have an effect on it. Really only you will really figure this out based on trial and error by having that wireless repeater, plug it into an outlet, seeing the connection between it, seeing the speeds that you get, doing a speed test, and having it plugged into different other places in your house to, uh, to figure out where is the best placement for the routers. Ideally, you wanna put it in a spot where you get really low reception and really low like Wi-Fi signal, and this will improve it hopefully tremendously for you. Let me know if this works out for you. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the description for this monoprice particular mesh setup uh, down below. It's the cheapest that I can find, and it seems to be great. I've been using it a little bit off camera, and it's seemed it's seamless transition from uh, access point to access point. It's like I never lose any type of connection. And I have a garage downstairs that I have. And so being able to kind of like plug in an access point downstairs to my garage and being able to have an access point up here and not lose connection is pretty freaking cool. It's not the greatest speeds, but the fact that I can actually get an, an, a Wi-Fi signal downstairs to be able to just like, you know, while I'm fixing my car or doing different things downstairs, be able to Google and YouTube some stuff is awesome. As well as having everybody being able to stay connected no matter where they are in the house not having our like youtube and netflix and anything else buffering the wi-fi experience has been great hopefully this helps you out let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below this is james from iron tech catch you in the next one take care